Good evening. Welcome to our Vespers tonight. And I do have another recipe for our, our faith. And just to let you know, next week for Wednesday, we'll be Facebook Live for our Ash Wednesday service. So you can tune in there um, for that instead of our Vespers. Um, our quote for tonight is, People of our time are losing the power of celebration. Instead of celebrating, we seek to be amused or entertained. Celebration is an active state, an act of expressing reverence or appreciation. To be entertained is a passive state. It is to receive pleasure afforded by an amusing act or a spectacle. And that's in the Wisdom of Heschel by Abraham Joshua Heschel. So our icebreaker tonight is, what's your favorite kind of meat? Oh, and to share about a special celebration. I'll just share my favorite kind of meat. Um, I think chicken, I can eat it any kind of way and, and every day, but um, I just, that would be my favorite uh, kind of meat. And Rich is going to share about a special celebration. Uh, well, just to add real quick, uh, my favorite meat is the hot dog. I love hot dogs grilled, not boiled. Boiled hot dogs are the worst thing you can eat. Grilled hot dogs are one of the best things you can eat. And hot dogs are flexible in that you can put them in baked beans and have a really scrumptious meal. <clears throat> um, special anniversaries. Every April 22nd, I celebrate my wedding anniversary, a very special day in my life. But... In 1990, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of Camp Living Waters. <clears throat> we had a weekend celebration. A lot of people that were affiliated with the camp came back. All the administrators from Living Waters history were there. Some campers came back. And we spent a weekend just reminiscing and telling stories and sitting around the campfire and it was just a special time to celebrate what was a special place to a lot of people. I look forward to hearing about some of you all's favorites uh, or special celebrations. Tonight we have a story about a celebration and um, we don't always think about that story of, about in terms of celebration. It comes from Luke 15 and it's... Um, verses 12 through 24. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me a share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself to one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many, how many of my father's hired hands have bread and enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I'll say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and he kissed him. And then the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it, on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. So I was, I was, I was reading this scripture, this story. What um, did you hear Jesus maybe saying to you personally? I heard Jesus telling about this story about self-centeredness, 
maybe poor decision making, hunger, regret, forgiveness, love, acceptance, celebration. Where do you see yourself in the story? The story is known as the story of the prodigal son. So I actually looked up. I had never thought about what the word prodigal actually meant. It seemed like a wayward son. And um, uh, so the, the definition of prodigal is one who spends or gives lavishly or foolishly. One who has returned after an absence. Um, another definition said very generous, lavish, like your prodigal of smiles. You know, you're very generous with your smiles. Or prodigal with praise. You're very generous with your praise. We seem to focus on the prodigal of the wayward son and how much love his father shows him when he returns. Um, you know, because, and so in that regards, both are prodigals, right? The son is a prodigal because he, um, he spent foolishly or lavishly, um, and he returned after being absent. But the father is a prodigal in that he la he's very generous and lavishes his son with forgiveness and love. And um, then he also, um, you know, uh, spends, one may say, foolishly or, or generously on a big celebration for his son when he returns. So he says, bring out the meat, bring out the fatted calf. So let's celebrate. So this is the place where the point where I should bring out my plate of meat that I've cooked. But unfortunately, I didn't think about just grilling up that hot dog tonight because um, I think that would be a great recipe for cooking meat is grilling up a hot dog. Um, or, you know, Rich and I like to grill steaks on the or cook steaks on the grill. So there's not much of a recipe to that. We just simply put them on the grill. Um, <laughs> In fact, the last, the last steaks we ate, I didn't even put any seasoning on. We just uh, put them on the grill. That's pretty easy. But maybe you have favorite meat recipes that you'd like to share. Um, uh, maybe pass down um, some kind of recipes that, that you learned um, to love and now cook. Um, but as we think about that celebration, bringing out the fatted calf, the, the beef, the meat, we are reminded of God and the generous, how he generously lavishes us with love and forgiveness and acceptance. And we have a God that is waiting just to celebrate with us. Um, I really like that quote at the beginning that says, Pe people of our time are losing the power of celebration. Celebration is an active state, an act of expressing reverence or appreciation. You know, we celebrate holidays and, um, and but yet we're reminded through this story that if we're prodigal Christians, we will make time to celebrate God every day in our lives through prayer and singing and praising God. We could celebrate God by lavishing love on one another as God lavishes love on us. I mean, I think about celebrations in my life, celebrating, you know, and I think about those times that those celebrations meant and, and they were simple. They weren't anything big, you know, um, picnics with my mom out under the pine trees at, at, at growing up where we lived. And, you know, it was that lunchtime meal out there was a celebration, you know, just being in nature and God and just celebrating God's creation and, and this meal together, you know, or celebrating, you know, through stopping for ice cream on a hot day and just how, how God's spirit can come and just cool us down. And um, I remember celebrating in Walmart once or Kmart, one of those two stores with a friend of mine, and we were singing and dancing down the aisles. And, um, you know, uh, singing and telling jokes on the way to church camp. A celebration, celebrating life and love and the enjoyment of all that God has given us. So I like to. Uh, I have another quote I'd like to share um, as we uh, close. Is celebrate who you are in your deepest heart. Love yourself, and the world will love you. And that's by Amy Lee McCree. It reminds us that God is celebrating us by lavishing love on us. 
that what so when you're eating meat this week um or if you're vegetarian or vegan or something else you know maybe when you just see um some animals or just think about what you're eating it is your meat your protein um celebrate be prodigal and lavish god's love on yourself and on others so i like to close with the song um this is the day because it feels like a song of celebration to me this is the day this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made i will rejoice i will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us pray. God, we rejoice in this day. We rejoice for the prodigals who have come home. Those who have been separated from their families and have been reunited. Families that have separated themselves through anger and fighting and finally come together, lavishing love on one another. We are thankful for the times, God, that you lavish love on us, especially those times when we feel like we're undeserving. As the prodigal son felt undeserving love, that he was un, not, will, not worthy or he didn't deserve his father's love and forgiveness. And yet he offered it to us just as you, God, offer your forgiveness and love to us unconditionally. And we are so thankful. We are thankful for celebrations, those times in our lives that we can celebrate with one another, friendships and love and joy. And even in difficult times that we can find moments of celebration. We are thankful for all of your blessings, and we pray that you help us to take time to celebrate those blessings each and every day for the food that we have, for the friends, for our jobs, for our homes, for our transportation, for each thing in our lives. We have so much to be thankful for, God, and so much to celebrate. We pray for those who are in need at this time, those who are mourning the loss of the death of a loved one, those who are sick and in pain, those who are alone and feel like no one cares. Because God, we know that there are times in which we just don't feel like celebrating. And, but yet during those times of struggles, we know that you're with us and that you're bringing comfort to us and giving us strength and wrapping your arms of love generously and lavishly upon us and we are thankful we pray for our world at this time where we know so much is going on and we lift lift the needs up to you we pray for leadership and for guidance thank you god for your love amen thanks and have a good night